Ladies and gentlemen, today I am honored to bring you a guest who's a friend of mine and has a very intimate knowledge of Poland in the 1990s as he moved here from Chicago, Illinois. He went on to have grand success introducing television networks such as Nickelodeon, MTV, and Comedy Central. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Derek Ogrodny. So good to see you after these years, Derek. Hey, How are Ryan. you? Very good. Thanks. Thanks for having me on your show. Uh, you are an absolute legend. Um, you and I met under some very weird circumstances. We were on a TV show <laughs> together, uh, and we were instructed to learn some absolutely insane Polish song. What was the name of the song we learned? Oh Usually my God. Uh, uh, Usually Kohacz. You Usually kochać to nie indywidualne. Jak się to kochać, to tylko w dwóch, right? Yes, yes. Kabaret uh, starszych panów, I think it was. That's right. And there was song. one. There was one other song we did. Yeah, we wound up not recording it though. That was the more the the. the it was a more difficult one, but oh my gosh, that was a couple <laughs> of years ago. So my my memory's hazy on that one. I had no idea how hard it was to learn a song that you don't like. <laughs> I grew to like it just because I knew I could sing it. Yeah. Well, I've, I've, I watched the, uh, the recording of that, and I have to say, like, you know, sometimes you see yourself uh, in video and it's cringier than hell. And that was cringy, I'm not going to lie, but, man, I was so proud of us that we actually learned yeah. it. And we, like, we went to the minute. Like, we were in the car outside the studio practicing. Will, yep. right? His yep. Will, he was kind of, like, really drawing it to the line and um it worked out though it was great yeah i thought it came out really 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 well so uh obviously you know that's how we met and um you've been here a long time uh since 96 actually, april of 96 since 1996 yeah so in in uh let's see i think it was the 14th of april so i'm coming up on my what 27th anniversary uh in a week or so a little over it's a week in, it's incredible and it, it's hard for me to comprehend. I came to Poland for the first time in the year of 2000, and people were warning me. I had traveled from the UK to Poland. People said it was dangerous here. Uh, when you came in 96, what were people telling you? People weren't telling me anything. <laughs> I mean, I didn't know what to expect. I, I just knew, I mean, I had, I, before I moved here, and of course, and, and when I came here, I didn't know I was moving here yet. That, that just be, came later. But um, I, I actually came for a visit a year before that in 95, in August of 95. And I did a little trip around Europe and I spent, um, I spent about two weeks in Poland and I didn't expect to enjoy it as, as, as much as I did. I was mostly coming to visit family and I just, I really, really enjoyed it. And things were really cheap then if you had dollars. Sure. Um, things are definitely not cheap anymore, but at that time they were. And um, and I already spoke the language, which was which was a which was a big advantage. I spoke Polish before I spoke English, even though I grew up in the U.S. So I kind of thought to myself while while I was um, in uh, in Poland, um, wow, I could actually I could actually come out here and, and, and live. I mean, not permanent, but I could actually come out for a few months and bone up on my language uh, as a Polish language skills because they weren't as good as they are now and um get some maybe some tv experience because i was working in television in chicago and i thought that that was kind of the 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 seed of the idea to come to poland how old and were you at the time i was 25. okay so you had some adult experience in chicago and then uh you came over here not realizing that it was going to turn into a lifelong thing now were you from the yatskovo neighborhood you're, you're a no. Chicago guy. The way you speak Chicagoan, I don't really think of you as Polish, like in, in the first uh -huh. place, like image wise. So what was the Polish community like in Chicago where you're from? Well, we, my, my family lived and to this day still lives on the northwest side of Chicago, which wasn't so Polish. I would say it was probably more uh, Irish and Italian 
Um, and, and, and any immigrants who were there were mostly people who had been there for a few decades already. So they, they'd already had kids who were born in the country. Yatskova is more of a, a, an area where a lot of new immigrants will live. And so you'll see a lot of shops with, um, you know, a sign that says Movima Popolsku or the names mm -hmm. of the shops are in Polish or they have Polish products in the windows of the shops. And at that time, you know, 90, 95, uh, that was really the only place you would see um, a, a Polish in, in a shop. Now, and in my parents' neighborhood, there, there were some Poles living there, but not, not as many as there are today. It's, it's, been, it's, uh, it's really grown, and now you see those Polish shops in my parents' neighborhood. Um, and they have Polish products yeah. um, and Poles working there, and so it's, it, it's changed quite a bit. Well, I'll tell you, I'm a bit younger than you. I studied in Chicago, and I would go to Yatskova. I would take the blue line up to Belmont and Milwaukee, which was kind I of a, right a, by that. Yeah, Belmont shady Milwaukee. neighborhood. Yep. I'd go to Czerwone Yabushko, yep. and I did this so much that I actually started getting fat. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They closed that restaurant. Did they? They did. There's a few of them. They, they had like three or four of them. Yeah. It's a fixture of Chicago. I mean, I took my daughter there. You know, my daughter grew up in Poland, so she only knows okay. uh, America as a visitor. Right. And she was so confused. She's like, Daddy, people are speaking Polish in here. <laughs> like, what's going yeah. on? Where are we? Yeah, yeah. You know. So you worked around there. And I worked for a Polish uh, TV program that's still uh, being broadcast today called Polvision. And it's a two-hour primetime show. Um and uh, in the Polish language. And I was, that was actually this kind of the start of my TV career. Um, my first real job in television. Um, I was an editor and I also, also worked as a cameraman. I kind of jack of all trades. You know, we were sure. a little bit of TV sure. programs and did everything. So you're 25 years old. Uh, you just got done backpacking around Europe. You happen to go through Poland. You happen to speak the language, right? Because you have it yeah. in your family. You thought, yeah. hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come here and spend a little more time. 96, take me through it. How, how did you set up your life? Well, kind of unbeknownst to me, when I, when I got back after my trip, um, I met my uh, boss at Pole Vision. Uh, ha asked me, how did you enjoy your trip to Poland? And he was a Pole who had emigrated to the U.S. And I said, wow, I really loved it. And if there was ever a chance where, I don't know, I could, you guys could send me there and, and I can do some work. Because we, we used to have editors from TVP come in, or not editors, but uh, journalists come and uh, stay with us and they would work for our news program and in exchange they would get um, room and board and then they would also bone up on their English language and I thought, well, maybe we could do it the opposite way. I could go work and we, and we had a close cooperation with um, public uh, television, Polish public television. So I thought, well, maybe there's a, there'd be an opportunity for me to do it the other way. So I, I told my boss this and he said, okay, I'm gonna let you in on a secret. Um, I'm going to be leaving this company because I got a job as a general manager for a new music TV channel that's going to be launching in Poland called Atomic TV. It'll be okay. the first Polish language music TV channel. And he knew I was I was a creative person and I was looking for more creative projects. And I kind of, you know, thought, all right, you know, let's see what happens, you know. Uh, or may maybe it just fizzles out and um, it, it goes nowhere. And then he, he obviously he left the company as he said he would. And then fast forward to April of uh, it was in April or late March of 96. He called me up one day and he said, Hey, when can you get to Poland? <laughs> yes, we need people. Wow. We're, still, we're starting the channel. And I, I had no idea what I was going to be doing. Um, you know, I, I, I had various skills and I, I was just excited for more well, for the adventure uh, of it. So I, I took a leave of absence from work. I didn't quit and they, they didn't want to lose me. So obviously they, 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 they said, okay, well, I took a tip. I'll take a month off because I wanted to make sure I had something to go back to in case his uh, this TV channel was going to be a joke. And I thought, well, at the very least, if I, if it's if it's nonsense, and I'll just do another trip around Europe and enjoy enjoy some holiday. And um, I got hired right away um, because uh, there were they needed people from with you know first of all growing up with MTV who knew what MTV looked like, and that's what we were kind of of course modeling ourselves after. And someone who spoke English and Polish and had TV experience. So I kind of, I kind of fell into their laps at the right time. Uh, and it was also the beginnings of cable uh, television in Poland. So it was a very, 
very dynamic time. Also, you know, Poland had was still a, a very young uh, country under the capitalist system. So there was just money for a lot of things. There's a lot of expansion. It's kind of the wild, the wild east, I like to call it. And so it was just a combination of right thing, uh, right person at the right time. I was in, I was at the right age. Just a volatile cocktail of um, you know adventure and excitement. Sure. And uh, one thing just led to another, you know. It's 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 almost unthinkable though, because in mid '90s, people were still going to Chicago to work as like cleaners yeah. and and these like sure. lo- not like today people go as uh, doctors or whatever. And you came over here. You, you had mentioned that the money was actually quite good at the time if you had a unique skill set. Can you elaborate on that a little? Well, you know, when I first arrived, I. Uh, um, I was making a pretty meager salary. I think I was making like a thousand dollars a month, whatever the exchange <laughs> rate was at the time. It may have been like two and a half or two point four zloty to the dollar. It's a lot more than that now. Mm. And you know, th- the prices were cheap. Uh, renting a flat was cheap. Groceries were cheap. Bills were cheap. So, you know, that money went a long way. And um, after about a year, I knew I wanted to stay. Because I still I, I still didn't really think of, that I had moved to Poland. I just thought, okay, this is a cool little adventure. I'll do it for six months. And six months turned into a year. And then after a year, I thought, oh, I'll stay another year. And um, But then it, I knew it had to just make sense for me financially. And my bosses at the time were British and, and American. So, you know, I just kind of said to them, hey, I would really like to stay. And I knew they really liked my work. And I got along well with, with everybody. And... Um, and they just kind of said, you know, n- n- name your price. And that was the first time in my life anyone said, how much you want to make? And then I said it and they said, OK, that's fine. Blew my mind. And, and it was at that point that I thought, OK, this is my land of opportunity, not the U.S. Because in the U.S., I mean, I was doing some TV work, but I wasn't I wasn't doing exciting things like interviewing Metallica or traveling around Europe or around Poland and um producing various things. I was, I was working in the promos department. I was, I was heading the promos department, which, you know, I kind of had to create it. And it just, I I just had a really creative job, exactly the thing I wanted to do. And after about four years of that, just when I thought, just when I was getting bored and thinking, maybe it's time to go back to Chicago and try my life there. um, We were told that MTV had bought or was going to buy, was in the process of buying Atomic TV and it would be rebranded as MTV Poland. So, hmm. and then and they offered me the job of creative director. So in, in about four, four and a half years, I went from being a lowly video editor at a, at a, at a, at a small Polish t- TV program in Chicago for immigrants, just to uh, being offered a job as um, creative director at, at, at what then was one of the top youth brands in the world. Doesn't mean yeah. much now, but at the time it was a big thing. And I, and I just thought, Wow, this is this is the kind of opportunities that are that are kind of falling in my lap in, in, in this country. So I have to stick around and ride that out because I'm definitely not going to be handed those kind of opportunities in, in, in Chicago. And that was really it's for what certain. Made me, yeah, that's what made me plant my roots here. It's it's like backwards world or something. Your story, especially given that time frame. You know, now there's a lot of opportunity. It's uh, quite obvious in a sense, but people must have just been baffled by the fact that you came here. What was what was the perception of Polish people? Uh, uh, per their perception of me being here? Yes. Uh, yeah, confusion, because that's not the way it was supposed to go. Um, I'd always get that, like, what are you doing here? <laughs> and, you know, and then they were even more surprised when I was enthusiastic about liking it, you know? Um, she, uh, it's it wasn't quite the metropolitan city that it is today it wasn't part of uh it was definitely more eastern european and um there was there was definitely still a lot of remnants of you know soviet architecture and things like that sure um because it was all it was all in transition but um i really enjoyed it because it was such a different environment and i met i, I made friends very quickly and i had a great job and met lots and lots of nice girls too that that's important you told or me it was that. important then. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, um, they were they were really surprised that I'd want to stick around. And, and you know, 
you know, I, I heard some not so nice things about myself as well. Like, oh, the only reason he actually has his position is because he has an American passport, blah, 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 blah. But, you know, I like to think that I, I do have skills and I continue to to have, you know, work for cool uh, uh, international broadcasting companies later on. So it wasn't just my, my passport, guys. Sure. So sorry to break it to you, but I did fine. Sure. No, I can I can relate to that kind of criticism, but I think it's true being a foreigner maybe makes you stand out a little bit. And that's good to get oh like God. initial positive um, reaction to people. So it does open doors. But then to actually go to like the deeper levels of professional networking, there are yeah, a lot of obstacles to... that occur because you're a foreigner. Sure. And you, and you have to have something to back it up that might get your foot in the door. That might work. That might work in the short term. But if it's going to lead to anything more and develop into a career, then you have to have something to back it up, not just your English language. And, you know, now now it's not maybe not so weird to hear people speaking, walking down the street, speaking English or other foreign languages in Poland. But at the time, it was strange. I mean, I remember I used to I, I used to I used to uh, jog a lot when I lived in the States. So when I moved into Poland, I was still jogging. No one was jogging at that time. Now you got marathons and everyone's into running and running shoes and you always see people running. No one was running at that time. People would honk their horns at me. They'd shout out the window, hey, who's chasing you? Hey, hurry up. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I know how women feel now. And yeah, that's uh, funny. I mean, you you like probably looked like some degenerate running down the street to them. Yeah, and I had spiky hair and I was wearing funky clothes and I just didn't I didn't I didn't look I stood out. Like you you knew I wasn't uh from from you weren't you're not from around here, are you? You know, kind of thing. So I, I definitely stood out. And, 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 that, and, that, and that was a good thing as well, because I would, people remembered me, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, nowadays, Drashaj culture, like hooligan culture, seems to have gone the way of oblivion. You know, you really don't see those guys so much. But I think in the 90s, it was at some sort of peak. When I came here early yeah. 2000s, sure. it could be dangerous, I think, to go down the street with spiky hair. Did you have any scary interactions with people? Like, I'm very curious, what were some of the negatives that you experienced? Um, I didn't have any confrontations like that. I think the fact that I spoke Polish impressed people. And so I never got that kind of like, you know, what are you doing here? You shouldn't be here um, mm -hmm. because I spoke the language. And so there was always that more of a fascination like, oh, wow. What, you know, you speak English and you speak Polish. What, what are you? Where are you from? You know, and and my name's my real name's Dariusz, not 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 Derek. So I, you know, everyone calls me Derek. So I just stuck with that, Daddy. That's why I just stuck yeah. with it because it's, it's a brand. Um, I did have, I, I did get mugged once, but it had nothing to do with me being American. That's just me being. It was me being stupid and not very cautious. <laughs> what are you referring I, to? Robbery in the apartment. Yes, yes, sir. That is a crazy story. Do you feel comfortable sharing that? Sure. I, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll condense it because it's it, when I when I get no, into the details. It, I think it's I interesting mean, enough just to to share the context because I also want to paint a picture of the time. Well, the, in, in two thousand, um, this is right after I joined MTV and decided, okay, I need to stay and plant my roots. And I actually bought a flat. That was like the the, the thing that said, okay, I'm not going anywhere mm. uh, quickly. So I bought a flat and I, it was still, I don't know, I, I was, I, I only had half of my furniture, so it was still kind of empty, but I was living there. And I remember um, I got, um, my, there was a, my, my doorbell rang and I had been expecting a friend to come in uh, have for, you know, have coffee in the morning. Uh, a friend of mine who worked, uh, a, a woman, a woman named Anya who lived, uh, not would live, but worked nearby and she started work earlier than I did. So she'd come in for a coffee just when I was getting up, and um, and I thought it was her because she said she was gonna she was gonna drop by. So um, the doorbell ring uh, rings. I get up, I throw my bathrobe on. My eyes are kind of half closed, um, and it was winter. It was February, and so and the, and I know the door in the uh, to the to the building the, the lock was broken, and so it was really cold in the stairwell. Um, and you could feel it when you would open the door. So I kind of opened the door and that was my first mistake. I didn't look through the, through the peephole and I opened the door and I kind of opened it a crack because like I said, it's kind of, it's kind of cold in, in that stairwell. And instead of my friend Anya, there were two, two young fellows, uh, dressed in black, um, standing outside, uh, the door. And I had just moved, I'd only just moved in like maybe a month or 
two before then. And one of them asked me if uh, Piotrek, Peter, lives his home. And I just thought, okay, maybe someone named Peter lived here before and that's mm -hmm. who they're looking for. And I said, no, 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 there's no, there's no Piotrek here. And they said, are you sure? And I said, yes. And then there was this awkward pause and this red light was just going on in the back of my head, like, wait, there's something not right here. Close the door. And I went to close the door and one of them uh, put his hand uh, through the, um, between the door and the, and the door jam and he was holding a knife. And I'm just looking at that like, oh my God, this is <laughs> happening. And um, they were, you know, I was in my bare feet and in my bathroom and there were two of them. So they pushed their way in. Um, I thought they would take off, but they pushed their way in, came into my apartment, locked the door. Uh, one guy grabbed me, pinned me to the wall, put the knife to my to my throat. The other guy just started walking through my apartment. And the guy who was watching me, he was he was saying things like, you know, don't if you make any noise, I'm going to cut your throat. I'm going to I'm going to po poke out your eye. I'm going to cut off your ear. You know, he's oh just kind God. of you know giving me these threats. And you know, even though even though I, I was scared. Um, I never, I never panicked. I just kind of knew instinctively that if I, you know, just let them take what they want and they'll just go. Right. So mm -hmm. I wasn't going to, you know, try to be, you know, Chuck Norris and, you know, start, <laughs> start fighting with them. And, um, and, at, uh, at, at some point we wind up in another room. They made me lay down, you know, that's easier to, uh, I'm, I'm a tall guy. I was taller than the guy who had the knife to my throat. So, um, you know, he had me laid down to make me less dangerous. And at that moment, my doorbell rang. And it was my friend Anya, who I had completely, of course, already forgotten that she was supposed to come. Oh, and, up. and I'm like, oh, no. And OK, I laugh about it now. It wasn't funny then. And I'm, and I'm thinking, oh, my God, I hope they don't open the door and let her in. Because I could easily see them opening the door and she not seeing who's opening the door, walking in, and then it slams shut behind her, right? And I'm just thinking, oh, please don't pull her into this. And and one of the guys ran to the door. One guy watched me with the, the guy with the knife was watching me on the floor. And the other guy went, looked through the peephole, saw her there. And I, you know, I kind of whispered to the guy, I'm like, it's my friend. She was supposed to come here. And they just waited until she left. And then she later told me after I called her and told her what happened, she said, she said, oh, I thought maybe you had, I thought maybe you had, a, you had went, gone out the night before and, and picked up some girl. And, you, and that's why you weren't <laughs> opening the door. Right. Like, I wish that was... <laughs> I wish that had been the case. Uh, I was, you know, and so that kind of freaked them out. And so they, they tied me, they tied my hands behind my back. They had a rope, tied my hands behind a, uh, uh, my, my back. I had a, I had some laundry hanging next to me and there were some socks. So they took a sock and they stuffed it in my mouth and they did, they, they, they said, uh, okay, now you lay here and count to a hundred and don't move. And, uh, and cause we're going to be outside the door. And if, and if you, um, if you make a noise or you get up, we're going to come in and we're going to kill you. And I knew that wasn't true because I'd seen enough, you know, uh, co cop shows in the States to know that that <laughs> count to a hundred because we're going to be hightailing it out of here. For sure. So, yeah. So the moment that they, they, they left and they shut the door behind them, I got up, I was able to wriggle my, my hands free of the rope, took the sock out of my mouth, locked the door so they couldn't come back in. And the first thing I did before I called the police was I called my mom in the States because she had all my, uh, she had all my credit card numbers and stuff. And at the time I didn't have any Polish um, credit cards. They were all U S cards and stuff. And I forgot to mention, they took my wallet, which had my cards in about 300 Zwati or $75 at the time uh, in it. Um, they took a, 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 my, my work uh, cell phone and they took uh a, a disc man I had laying on the floor, which had a busted door. So it wasn't working. And they took that. Okay. That was about it. I didn't have anything like a computer yet. And I didn't have anything for them to lift. So, uh, they took off and I called my mom and I said, you know, cancel my credit cards, block them. And so she did that. And then I called the police and, um, you know, of course they never found the guys. I didn't think they would, but it was kind of scary coming home for a while. I you couldn't know? imagine that's so violating. You know, they, they came into your yeah. house. You must have been paranoid constantly. Sure, sure. And that was a reminder to me that, you know, as, as, as good as my life was here, you still have to be vigilant, you know. And um, so I was definitely more careful or, or definitely paid a lot more attention to my surroundings. And even people on the bus, you know, I could spot the pickpockets just, you know, watching how, how, they, how they operated and they would communicate non-verbally with each other as they, 
you yeah. know, made their rounds through 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 a bus. So uh, I, w- um, I was robbed once as well in 2001 really? in Krakow, but it was not nearly as dramatic as yours. They just stole all of my stuff and left like my passport and my plane tickets out in the open. Like we, we well, that's nice. You know. Yeah. Yeah, they didn't. They can't do anything with those. It's nice. That they yeah. Didn't. <laughs> yeah, I suppose so. Uh, and it's funny because back then, you know, you needed the physical ticket, and right. you had you had mentioned something a moment ago that you didn't even have a computer yet. And I'm thinking about that. Yeah. No internet. You know, cell phones weren't much of a thing. Your friend Anya had to come and actually knock on your door. Yeah. Do you ever miss and- the charm? Do you ever miss the charm of those times? I do. They were simpler times. You know, we didn't have social media. A phone, uh, uh, when I say cell phone, it wasn't a smartphone. So a phone, you could send texts and you could call somebody. That was about it. You couldn't even take a photo with that phone. And um, they were simpler times. I'm, I'm not, I shouldn't say whether it's, you know, that's better or worse. You know, the, the smartphones are great. Um, the good, the bad, the ugly. Um, I miss the, um, the dynamics of the time you know, the, 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 the socioeconomic dynamics, because there was so many changes happening. And it was a really exciting time, especially to be 25, 26 years old and um, n- not having a family and, and just being out, outside of your, uh, uh, outside of my parents' um, house for the first time in my life. Um, all those things were just created a, a real sense of adventure and I can do anything and the country was giving me so many opportunities that I just kind of felt like, wow, this is a good time for me to try a lot of things that I probably wouldn't have tried in, in, in the States, like, you know, becoming a DJ, starting a record label. Um, um, I don't know, doing a lot more travel um, and trying different different things. And it was it was a really eye opening experience. Poland gave me a, a lot of opportunities at the right time in, in my life. Now, when I was um, in 1996, I'd have been about. 16 years old. I think that's when I got my driver's license in 96. And I, I'm not sure if I'm mistaken here, but you know, Smashing Pumpkins were huge and I was just eating up everything MTV sold. Uh, I would have given anything to meet the uh, musical acts coming in there. And I'm curious, being all the way over here in Poland, was MTV relevant? Like, did you get to meet any rock stars? Sure. It was very relevant. Um, even in the States, it was still relevant. And in Poland, it was it was a it was a legendary thing. And so when when we when we launched MTV here, it was a big deal. And for many years, um, it opened a lot of doors for me. Even after I left uh, the company, it was still opening a lot of doors for me because I had a I had a creative role. I was creative director, creative manager, creative producer. I always had creative somewhere in my in, in my title. And, and so to work for it for a it, for a respected international TV brand that had creativity at its core. Um, that was the best possible job I could have until it stopped being the best possible job I could ever have. But for, for, for quite a long run, it, um, it opened a lot of doors for me. And, um, you know, like I said, the brand doesn't mean that much anymore. So saying, saying telling a young person you, you worked at MTV is, the, you know. No, I, I'm still very impressed by that. And I think a lot of people yeah. would be. But uh, yeah. you, you didn't give me what I'm looking for here. Oh, I, I did. You, I did. Yes, I, I want did you to name that. drop a little bit. What rock stars did you meet? Um, I did. A, well, I, 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 got, I got to meet a lot of Polish rock stars, of course, at parties and things like that. But as far as international ones, I was because I was a native English speaker. Uh, it wasn't my job to interview bands, but because I was interested in music and because um, I, I spoke fluent English and could do an interview, I was given the opportunity to interview a lot of bands. So I interviewed Metallica twice. <laughs> I interviewed Slayer, uh, Faith No More, uh, Jimmy Page and Robert Plant, interviewed The Offspring, interviewed Alice Cooper, um, interviewed the Buzzcocks, punk band, and probably a few more that I'm forgetting. Uh, um, Adrian Ballou, who played with and Bowie, King Crimson. Would they come into the studio, actually, or would you go to the concert venue? There was no. That was it. Was mostly at the concert venues that uh, that, uh, that 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 these would happen because they were usually on tour. And it was bef- kind of maybe a few hours before their show, so it was kind of you know so usually a hotel room or some kind of room that was um, allocated for that. Um, and- and would would they be curious about you at all? You speaking fluent sure. English and sure, because they'd come in and they would expect. Because I usually wasn't their first interview of the day, 
And so they, they, they were usually expecting a Polish journalist. So when I would be like, hey, hey, how's it going? You know, <laughs> I'd be like, where are you from? So they would always kind of, you know, start the conversation. And, um, you know, uh, in the case, you know, and then they, you know, how did you get here? Because that, you know, at the time, this wasn't a popular destination for Americans or, or, or many other for sure. foreigners. And so there was always that question. And then after I told my stories, you know, I, I would hear interesting stories back, like uh, Tom Araya of Slayer, his, he's of, his family's uh, 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 got Argentinian roots. So when I said, oh, you know, I grew up speaking Polish and I grew up in the States, but I grew up speaking Polish before I spoke English. She's like, yeah, that's just like me. You know, my family was from Argentina. We only spoke Spanish in the house. And it wasn't until I got a little older, you know, that I started speaking English and hanging out with American kids. So it was interesting, you know, and, and, you know, when you start an interview out like that, it's going to be a little bit different, you know, it's, you're, you've already broken the ice and, you know. It's, it's just amazing the opportunities that present themselves when you move yourself like far out of your element, right yeah. out of your home country. For example, Absolutely. I have seen Air Force One. I have seen the motorcade of Obama twice, Trump sure. once, uh, Biden twice, I think. My daughters saw that as well. My American family, I don't think they ever saw a U.S. Sure. president or motorcade, you know? So it's, it's, it's weird, the things that you can gain by you know, taking risk, going somewhere. Not only that, you know, every, every time I would go home uh, and, and talk to my friends or my family, you know, not much would happen there. You know, every year it would be like, yeah, you know, I was just a little bit older. So-and-so's kid, you know, is in high school now. This kid, so-and-so had a kid and, you know, things like that, you know, but just like normal life stuff. And then like, well, what's up with you? And I'd be like, oh, my God, you know, and then I'd have like this whole list of like amazing things that I did um, and travels and and people I met and things like that. And and that, that's that's what really made me love living in Poland. It's just I knew I wouldn't have that same life in the U.S. Now, had I had I never come to Poland? Um, I probably would have had a good life in the U.S., but it would look very different than 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 to what I what it is now. Let's and, be honest; you wouldn't meet Metallica. No, and and I would say that if I was coming to Poland now, my life wouldn't be. I wouldn't have as many probably adventures as I did back then because it was a different. Like I said, social, political, economic conditions were a lot different, and um, you know now there's plenty of foreigners here. Yeah. And, you know, the TV market is more is more mature and there's different brands and the market's quite consolidated. So there's not as many brands to work for there are many companies to work for. It's a little harder. It would be a little harder to break in. And and the money was a lot better back then, too. Yeah. So yeah. You know. that's for sure. I'm, I'm curious. Uh, you were 25 when you first came here. Mm -hmm. If you don't mind me asking, how old are you now? Fifty three. Okay, 53. So that's, uh, yes. that's well over half your life now. Here. Yep. Yep. I'll be reaching the halfway point myself in a couple of years, which is an interesting notion. I'm curious, do you have any regrets about, you know, leaving your home country? And No. No. I, I love going back. <clears throat> um, I'm able to look at the U.S. through different eyes, being away from it, and I'm sure you can relate to that. Um. Plenty of things I didn't notice before now become more apparent, especially when you live in other um, live in other uh, countries and you and you see that there are better ways of doing things. You know, I, I think as Americans, we grow up thinking there is no better place. And I'm not going to say That's Poland's true. a better place, better than the U.S. or anything like that. There's pluses and minuses. Um, and I would. But, you know, my my wife is from uh, Chicago as well. She's American. And we talk about this all the time when we when we go back. It's fun for about two or three weeks, and then we can't wait to get back to Poland. And there, there's, we obviously we miss our families. We love, we love seeing them. Um, but then there's things about the U.S. we don't miss. You know, like if either of us gets really sick, we won't go bankrupt. Yeah. Um, going That's to the I doctor, or going to the hospital, or getting treatment. We don't worry about school shootings. Um, and you know, we have a teenage boy in the house, so that's that's um, that's a real concern. I relate to that so much. I mean, my, my nieces and nephews go to school in America, and I'm from all the way over here, you know, it's, it's concerning just to even have that thought in the, in the back of the head. And uh, yeah, th I mean, those, those are the things that, that I think Polish people fail to appreciate because they've never real, really lived in the reality of those other uh, issues, right? Here, poverty, 
was harsh. Alcoholism, like there are plenty of social yeah. issues that make Polish people think, wow, are you crazy for moving here? Yeah. But I would also argue that if you live in a place where, you know, a broken arm is going to cost you like $30,000, even sometimes yeah. if you have insurance, yeah. um, it's a different level of stress. I just think, I, I think, I, I think life's just in general easier. I don't want to say it's carefree. I've had, I've had my share of stress and bad, bad things happen, but I just think in general things are uh, a little more easy, easy going. You could actually enjoy life as opposed to just be working to live. You could actually, I, I, I think uh, we, we get a better work life balance uh, in general. Some people probably mm -hmm. might, might not because they have to work a lot more, but I think we get a better work life balance and, um, I don't know. You know, Warsaw's not as big as Chicago. It's still a big city. There's still a lot happening here, but it's a smaller city, so it's easier to like navigate things. It's just it's it's not such a big production to go out and things like that and meet up with people and get things done. Poles would disagree with me. They'd say Polish bureaucracy is uh, nothing like it in the world, but um, okay. It's, it's, it's yeah, the bureaucracy <laughs> it is challenging. Easy. Yeah, tax can but be a little general, bit intense. Yeah. In general, I'd say, I'd say life. Uh, there's 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 certain things you just don't have to worry about living here, and that's uh, and that's a major plus. I absolutely agree. Well, I, a defining moment for me, you know, when I moved to Warsaw, I couldn't imagine that anyone would love that city. And after living there for some years, I remember distinctly flying back from the United States, seeing Warsaw from the airplane, and I had this feeling like like I'm home. I've yeah. always been a transient person. I never felt that before. And to this day, I like when I see Warsaw, there is this weird home comfort that I have from nowhere yeah. else. I'm curious, what was your moment? I think, um, well, the, the, for the first four years that I was here, this, these were the atomic TV years leading up to um, it becoming uh, MTV Poland. And then those first four years, I never thought I was going to stay here. I just thought I was here for the short term. And I was going to, um, and, and I was just gaining TV experience, and I was going to take that experience back to the states and parlay that into a better job. Mm -hmm. And every year, I kept saying, you know, people, my friends and family would ask me, so how long, so long are you going to stay out there? And I just kept saying, oh, another year. I'll stay another year. I'll see what happens. And I was always happy to come back. My life was just really exciting and very fulfilling. Um, and um, you know, I wasn't living in my, it was also the, the first time I was living away from my parents. So it was, it was kind of, you know, it was, it was doing a lot of growing up uh, at the same time. And I was at the, I was at a good place to be growing up uh, as well. And, um, and then uh, when I finally got the MTV gig, I just thought, okay, I, I need to stay here. And then I planted my roots and I brought over all the things from the States that make me me. So I brought my records, my books, my DVDs, um, I don't know, certain like knickknacks and create, you know, I, I, I bought my own furniture, you know, I was doing really adult things, but when you're just renting apartments and not thinking long-term, you don't invest in things like a couch sure. or your, your own mattress and things like that. So, um, and I think, every, you know, and like I said, every time I, uh, I would go home then and even now after a few weeks, I, I miss Warsaw because this is now where I live. This is my, I've spent more than half my life here and this is where my, my family is now and um, and uh, where my life is. And I really enjoy what all the things that I do and all the opportunities that Poland continues to uh, to offer. We have a lot in common in that regard. And um, in wrapping up, I want to ask you a few more questions about the mm -hmm. 90s. I'm fascinated with this uh, period. Uh, we've got a couple of people watching here. If any of you have questions for Derek, please write them in the comments. And um, I'll go ahead and ask him your questions before we wrap up for today. So 1990s, tell me, what was it like to go to the doctor in Poland? What, was the standard different than in the United States? I'm trying to remember my first doctor visits. Um, I think my first visits were probably to some kind of rundown places. or uh, For me, they were rundown because... You know, when you usually if, when you when you when you go to a private doctor in the states, you know, because you're you're paying so much money there, you know, everything's like tip top, super shiny, um, very sterile and, and and whatnot. And then I went to some some places, which you know now I would look at it and it's no big deal. It's kind of standard. But at the time, I thought, oh, this is really 
you know, it's like a hallway just filled with people waiting to see the doctor. Um, it was really cheap. I remember, I think I remember the first time I got a root canal in my life and it was in Poland. And I think at the time, this was in the nineties, late nineties, I think I paid somewhere around 40, $45 in the States. It cost you like a grand. Unfortunately, you know? unfortunately, I've also had root canals here in Poland and it costs yeah. more now. Yeah, no, yeah they, they cost now. more now for sure. But at the time it was, I can't even remember what it, how, how much it was and what the exchange rate was. But I think I remember at the time I counted that and I was like, wow. <laughs> and they, they did great work, you know, and I had cavities filled too and they did great work. So I knew that I definitely knew the quality was there. <clears throat> Um, I definitely, I definitely found though that they they like to prescribe a lot of medication, and even over prescribe. You know, just That's like true. oh, whatever you have, let's kill it. So here's you know, buy these six drugs that you need, and you only wind up using you know a third of them. Um, That's very true. Yeah. So a, yeah, that was that was definitely a, a plus. And I had a lot of friends who'd fly in from the UK and get like you know dental surgery and stuff like that, hair implants. Um, yeah. Never had them. <laughs> they would come, they would fly in and have that kind of work done because it was just a fraction of what they would pay back home. Wow. Okay. So I, I guess it wasn't, uh, it wasn't so bad. When I first entered Poland, it was uh, actually via Germany by bus and the quality of the road or lack thereof was striking. Not to mention yeah. the quality of the cars. I mean, they were abysmal. Tell me what was your impression of, um, you know, let's say driving culture, the roads, the uh, roads. Well, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to end pretty soon. Sorry, um, yeah. I got another call. But um, driving culture, I didn't drive for my first ten years here, and I was glad I didn't, because um, it seemed like there's so many more obstacles happening. Um, things like, well, you got your roundabouts, you've got your trams, um, pedestrians, um, summit. Um, the rules of the road are a bit different and whatnot. And I just, I just thought driving was just a lot more chaotic. This is before I started driving. And then I also, I thought people drove really fast here and, um, and um, maybe a bit more recklessly. I, I, I felt there wasn't much of like culture on the road. It was like, everyone's just kind of competing to get to wherever they were going. And, you know, they wouldn't let you in if you wanted to change lanes and things like that. And, and just a lot of road, <laughs> road rage in general. And now that I drive, it, maybe it doesn't seem as chaotic. I think I, it, there's, I understand it a bit more. And I think I'm more prepared for it because I can, I, I, I know, I, I can predict how people are going to drive here. And so that, that helps me not. In other my words, blood, my blood pressure. Down. <laughs> in other words, you have assimilated. Yeah. Yes. yes, yes, that's for sure. But Derek, I know you have another call. I really appreciate uh, catching up with you. I hope to see you soon. It's been too long. And, um, you know, maybe we'll get an opportunity to sing together <laughs> on <laughs> TVP again someday. Been fun. practicing. <laughs> yeah. So, guys, that was Derek, um, a very special person, and I'm grateful for his insight on uh, a different time here in the Republic of Poland. Thank you all so much for watching Cult America. See you next week.